Welcome back to FTL. Last time we played, the Eagle did not land. The Eagle has crashed, Houston. It went down in flames. We came up against a rebellion ship and there was no even there was no contest there. It was just over. But I was worried about that in that game because we had made it pretty far and we just didn't quite have the firepower to to make anything work. We had great defense, but you can only defend for so long. And so here we are on a new journey. So I didn't get any answers as to what we should try next time. So what we're going to do is this. I happen to be a big fan of Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder, and I have a whole collection of dice. So guess what? We're going to roll a dice. Or I'm going to throw a dice across the table. That's how that's going to work. So just random chance, we're going to roll a dice. It'll be a d10 since we have 10 variants here. Discounting the 6 because we don't have that one yet. Someday. Someday we'll get it. So rolling 1d10 now. That is a 7. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're taking the Rock Cruiser. This is not a ship I've had a lot of luck with in the past. And I think that's obvious because I don't even have a variant of it yet. It comes by default with just missile launchers, which I absolutely hate. Because... If you run out of ammo, then you have absolutely nothing. All in all, it's not a bad ship, though. Um, rock people are immune to fire. So if there is any fires, you don't necessarily need to worry about venting the entire ship just to get under control. You can send somebody in to, to take care of that. So, without anything else to really go over, we can leave the name the same. You don't actually ever see the name inside the game anyway. We have Jax, Eowyn, and Nicola. Sounds good to me. Let's go. So, we're carrying data vital to the Federation fleet. We've seen this before. Let's look at our first system. And it's pretty typical. No nebulas. Nothing right out the gate. Uh, given our choices, left or right, I think we're going to go left. And then just kind of shoestring our way through. So let's make our first jump. You find a rebel automated scout floating near this beacon. Despite its pristine condition, it appears deactivated. Uh, we could attempt to download the ship's data stores. Honestly, I don't care that much. Just scrap it. We need the scrap more. Mercenaries are swarming the galaxy now, knowing that their less-than-legal services are in demand during this period of unrest. One is waiting for you at the beacon and hails you. We could hire him. But we need the scrap. We could fight him, but I don't really want to risk taking that much damage. It looks like he's packing a laser and a bomb. I'm sure that we could take him. You know, let's try it. The more scrap we get in the beginning... It'll be easier to do the upgrades compared to later on when things are going to be harder to fight. Alright. Mercenaries are worse than rebels. The only honorable course is to engage a mercenary in battle. Alright, so we have two weapons here. We have an Artemis launcher that we're familiar with. We also have a hull missile. Now, the funny thing about hull weapons, there's hull lasers, hull missiles, hull beams. If you target a room that has nothing else in it, it does twice the damage. 
The downside, of course, is that you're not actually knocking anything offline. So, he has two, four, seven hit points. We could technically knock him out in two shots if we target right there. So, two missiles for some scrap. Pretty good deal, I think. You know what? Don't even power up the Artemis laser. Put that into the engines. Oh, well, I mean, just forget our engines, I guess. They send you a message. Your ship is surprisingly well equipped. Please take this and let us live. They'll give us eight scrap, which is nice. They'll give us a stun bomb. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, they're going to give us two missiles and we already spent one. We come out of this ahead. I suppose it just goes to show the old adage is true. You can get more with a kind word in a 2x4 than just a kind word. So we'll let him finish repairing the engines. And then we'll get out of here. Big jump forward. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. I want military goods. Okay, so same rules as before. It looks like it's got a beam weapon and an EMP weapon. That could be bad given we only have one layer of shields. However, just like before, we're going to target the systemless rooms, and we should be able to take care of it in two shots. All right, here comes its weapons. Here comes the beam. It damaged our weapons, but our weapons are still online. And we missed it. Okay, there goes the oxygen. We need that. We're only rocky on the outside. We're squishy on the inside. Okay, there's one hit. Come on. And there we go. We salvage what we can from the broken ship. We get 17 scrap investigating the station. It was designed to outfit rebel ships with drone systems. We find a functioning schematic. A defense drone, Mark II. Interesting. See, defense drones are actually kind of nice because they can shoot down incoming missiles. It's very possible to go really far with just a couple of defense drones, especially if you can get a drone recovery arm. Okay. Next. Oh, oh you got to be kidding me. It goes nowhere. We're going to be fighting the Rebellion this entire sector now. Oh, this just went from bad to worse. The Rebel fleet has found you. Yeah, of course they did. Okay, and this ship has no systemless rooms. So let's take the power out of medical, put that into the Artemis. Okay, target everything that we can. Oh, this is bad. All right, our shields are down. And now he wants to fight us. Okay. So we have no shields, We're, we have a hull breach, uh, shields are down even further, engines are damaged. That was a miss. We have another hull breach from the rebel artillery. 
door controls are down. Because of one wrong move, we are going to lose this game before we even started. Now we have fires. Get the fire under control. We have another hull breach. Actually, you two are in good health. Go get that online. You go fix the doors. Come on, get that patched up. Another hull breach. Power down the weapons, power on medical. Get in here. And I would say we could jump, but we can't even really do that right now because we'll be jumping right into another firefight. Okay, you guys go, go repair. And now navigation is offline. We're a sitting duck. All right, here comes another one. And our ship is gone. We only made it two jumps. I feel that wasn't even fair. I mean, that really was not even the slightest bit fair. Alright, well, given how short that was, I think we can get in one more. So, let's try this again. 1d10. That's an 8. That is the Slug Cruiser. We didn't see a lot of these the last time we went through. The Slug tend to live in the, uh, in the nebulas because they're all psychic. They can automatically see other living creatures even without sensors, which is why their ships don't tend to have any. And we do have two variants here. So, we'll go evens and odds. Evens will be the A, odds will be the B. That's a 10. Evens. We're going to stay with this. So, Junpeng and Sem. We have an anti-bio beam, which doesn't do us a lot of good, as, since beams don't go through shields. We'll have to use the dual lasers to punch through their shields and knock out their shield systems. And then we can use the anti-bio beam to just sweep through and kill people. Because that's the real um, strategy with the slug cruiser, is you want to just kill off the crew, which you can see because they're telepathic. Alright, let's go. First jump is a store. That's going to do us a lot of good. No, we're not going to go to the store. We're not going to waste time like that. Uh, we jump to a completely unremarkable binary star system. There is nothing else around. That's fantastic. Um, I also want those charged. Jump again. Upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings, and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. They want 16 scrap. We don't even have 16 scrap. So we're doing this the hard way. Too bad. You will regret this decision. Alright, lasers. Target that. 
And being slugs, as I said, we can see who they are. So there's an NG there. There's a Mantis there. And of course, they knock out our engines first try and set massive fires. All right. Um, get out of there. This is beyond hope. And now our navigation's offline. Get yourself healed up. Now our shields are offline. I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit attacked here. This is not even remotely fair. Engines are further damaged. Oxygen's offline, weapons are offline. Oh, there's no point in that. There's no air in there. Get the oxygen fixed. Target their weapons. Oh, wait. Anti-bio beam. Yeah, we can do that. Target them. There we go. Go get navigation back online. And hopefully we can get one more shot with the beam before they get their shields online. Oxygen's back on, is broken again. Their NG is working on their shield, so their shields will be up soon. Get our weapons online. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship. You strip it of useful materials. Yay. We're already down to half health on our first jump. Subsystems are down all over the place. I mean, after losing our rock ship on turn two, or turn three, whichever it was, this is just depressing. I mean, talk about being outclassed in every way. Our pilot didn't even get any piloting skill. Our engineer didn't get any engine skills. Because we spent the entire time fixing damage. Yeah, I'm a little bit miffed. I feel a little bit cheated here. It appears that an automated Rebel Scout was positioned within the nebula to warn of your passing. The ship starts to power its FTL drive. If it gets away, it'll no doubt warn the fleet of your position. Well, of course it will. And they have a missile and a rapid-fire EMP launcher. And we have anti-bio weapons for an automated scout. Oh, there goes our door systems. All right, you need a higher priority. Well, there goes the weapons. All right, take out their weapons. There goes our door controls. Their missile's still online, and it doesn't matter because they're gone. And the Rebel fleet is probably going to catch us now. Make what repairs you can. I do not see us getting to the other side of this sector. Almost. Come on, get it done. Alright, get back in the engines. Thankfully, we were in the nebula, so doubling their jump doesn't actually go that far. 
You arrive in the middle of a plasma storm, despite the harsh conditions a Rebel Scout ship seems to be waiting for you. So, we have only half of our power. We have no life support, only one weapon, no shields, and the Rebel ship looks like it's completely armed to the teeth. There is not enough power to do anything with. So we're going to turn the medical bay off to power life support. Um, we'll power the engines fully, since we can't get the shields online. Yeah, shields are now damaged. As if it hardly matters. All right, we've managed to knock out their weapons. They got them back online, though. Just keep trying. Suppress their weapons as much as you can. It's the only thing we can do. Target their cockpit. Let's see if we can take out their evasion and hurt their crew. Yeah, we can. Of course, now we're going to take a missile attack. Alright, just keep knocking out their weapons. Keep them suppressed as much as you can. Now, shields are gone completely. Please don't kill us. We'll give you everything we have. You know what? I really have nothing to lose at this point. I have been abused here since jump number one. I really don't care whether we live or die here, and I don't care if we take you out with us. Just keep hammering on them until they're dead. This is what you deserve. Goodbye. If you didn't want to die, perhaps you should have thought of that before you decided to attack me. And we're up to 42 scrap metal. It's not enough for us to really upgrade anything. We'll keep working on it, though. Okay. I need to save your your positions next time. Okay. Save positions. And let's jump. We're going to stick to the nebula. A black market weapons trader spins you a tale of the dangers of the nebula before pushing his wares. We could purchase an unknown weapon for 45 scrap, if only we had 45 scrap. It's a shame, I wish we could afford it. We'll ignore him for now. He's not bothering us. There is a store, though. A ship engineer has set up a small shop. That's good. Uh, let's see. Hacking, stun, no. Drone control, which would be kind of cool, but mm, without a drone control arm, it's kind of useless. I don't see anything here that we can really use. We can't afford any additional crew members, so... We'll fix our damage. We're not getting any upgrades anytime soon. Next jump! An unidentified ship is badly damaged and still being assaulted by a space pirate. The victim begins a distress message until the pirate cuts in and offers to split the bounty if you sit tight. Uh, we could accept the bribe. It gives us eight scrap, which is practically nothing compared to what we need. Or we could be a hero. Well, we're the Federation. Let's be the heroes. The pirate ship stops its pursuit and locks weapons on your ship. 
Alright, so. Get that online. Get that online. Uh, we don't have enough power for that, but that's alright. Do a lasers target their ship. Or their shields. Uh, they got more firepower than we have shields. That's unfortunate. Weapons are damaged. Go fix that. If we can get their Zoltan shield down, we can we might be able to get the anti-bio beam in there. However, that flat cannon of theirs is going to screw us. Go get the life support back online. Alright, we got their shield down. Target their weapons. Get them to knock that off. Alright, go get our weapons back online now. And keep their weapons suppressed with the lasers. You prove sufficient, a sufficient match for the pirates. They're powering up their FTL drive trying to get away. Well, we're not letting them do get away. Target their navigation. Get doors online. And that's it. We got them. The pirate ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap. Substantial? It's nine. Upon closer inspection, you realize the ship under attack was a rebel scout. It's too damaged to put up much of a fight. We could destroy them, or leverage them to convince them to delay the fleet. We're already ahead of the fleet. I'm not too worried about it. Scrap them. You strip the ship of anything useful and leave its crew to hope help arrives. Well, if it were up to me, I would have taken away their life support too. Finish with that, please, so that you can both go and repair the med bay. Everywhere we have turned so far, it has been nothing but people trying to kill us. Okay, we cannot power the bio beam. But that's fine. Everyone is healed up. Didn't I save your positions? Okay, there we go. So we can turn the med bay off, turn the bio beam back on. Or alternately, maybe there's a better strategy. Turn the med bay on. Let's use the breaching bombs. If we can target their life support with the breaching bombs, we might be able to simply starve them of oxygen. It's a strategy. A distress signal. Because that's always ended so well for us. Scanners are showing intelligent life forms on a planet nearby. No match for them can be found in the database. Well, let's look into it. We are telepaths. You land a small shuttle in an enormous field, whose only occupants are small, brightly colored, six-legged, horse-like animals. Could they be what your scans picked up? Hmm, I seem to remember we did something like this already. Let's use our telepathy. After a moment, your crew tells you that these are simple beings who enjoy a peaceful life. However, this isn't the first time a ship has landed here. They inform you of a nearby crash site. You follow the directions to discover an ancient NG ship. You find a deactivated NG, reroute his power from the shuttle to resuscitate it. After a while, it reboots, rebuilds, and offers to join you. We have done this before. So, welcome, Trico. Now we have a weapons officer. Uh, okay, well, that's, that's good. But you know what? Instead of weapons, I'd rather have you on shields, I think. Because, as far as I know, having somebody on shields will make them recharge just that little bit faster. Let's jump. 
You locate a nearby human mining colony where an unknown disease has spread virulently. They're setting up a quarantine to contain it, but a riot has broken out. We could send in a crew to help control the crowds, ignore them, or we have an NG crew member who is, of course, immune to disease because he's nothing but robots. With no fear of catching the disease, your NG crew member helps reassure and organize the infected humans. Calmed by its extensive knowledge of human physiology, the infected submit to quarantine in hopes that a cure can be found soon. The colony leaders offer a reward for helping prevent an ugly incident. We've got three missiles, a drone, and some scrap. Finally, something goes our way. Let's jump. We should be able to hit here, here, and maybe even get to here. We'll see. It looks like the be this beacon is home to a rebel checkpoint. They're stopping and searching any ship that passes through. Civilians are being harassed. The Federation members are detained. The rebels haven't noticed you yet. Fend for ourselves, attack and escape, stay out of the way, charge FTL, or we could bribe the rebels to release the civilian ships. I don't think I've ever done this before. Let's try and bribe them. They eagerly accept your bribe. Obviously, revolutionaries are underpaid. The civilian ships all begin to jump away. Let's try and contact them. The civilians are grateful, however, none of them seem eager to be mistaken as Federation loyalists, so they quickly jump away. Well, that's fair. But we saved people today. Let's make our next jump. A Federation encrypted signal is being broadcast from a nearby planet. Let's go look. You find a small cache of supplies that were surely left for any loyal Federation ships in trouble. You take all that you need, leaving some for others. Nice. We got our scrap back. All right, I thought about going there, but obviously we're not going to make it there. But we can jump here and then leave. Your ship is hailed. This is an automated message. Resisting our takeover is pointless. Prepare to die. It appears this rebel ship is run by an AI. Of course it is, and it's got a drone. No, it's not a drone. It's a hacking material. Alright, so... Breaching does some system damage. We're gonna have the breach bomb target their weapons. The lasers target their bridge. And they targeted our bridge, so now we can't dodge anything. That's not good. All right, their weapons are damaged. Let's uh, let's stop using that. Um, since they can't dodge, target their shields. Huh, their shields are tougher than I expected. Would you? Oh wait, you can't help that because that room is hacked. All right, their hacking is down. Knock out their weapons fully. All right, weapons are down, bridge is down, hacking's down, take out their shields. Knock out the engines, and it's done. Goodbye. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap materials. We got 13 scrap. Alright, everyone come get healed up. I don't know if anyone needs it, but some of you do. Maybe while you're in there, you can get a round of canasta in. Alright, back to your stations. Let's jump. To the exit! You arrived at the long-range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump. 
You see a civilian space station with heavy damage. You receive a message. We've been hit hard by the war. We need more drone parts to speed up our repairs. We'll buy some from you, if you have extra. Well, we are one shy of getting 24 scrap, but we can definitely let them have three. We're not using them. All right, so 62 scrap. It would take 50 to upgrade our shields, and we'd have nothing for the reactor. So we can't upgrade that yet. Maybe soon, though. Next sector. So looking at the map, we have a lot of options. We can go almost any way through this. Now, interestingly for us, being slugs, going through nebulas is actually kind of a benefit for us. We're not affected by them. So when I'm looking at this entire map, I think we go through the civilian sector, because forget the Zoltan, that's never worked for us. We hit the nebula, go through the civilians, more civilians, more civilians. We hit this last nebula, and then we can go right to the end. We use the nebulas to our advantage. So let's make the next jump. Welcome to a new sector. Get to the exit beacon and jump to the next sector before the pursuing rebels can catch you. Well, of course. So what are we walking into? There's a store right there. We're going there. And then a big nebula. That we could just kind of shoestring our way through before we head on to the exit. The more time we spend in this nebula, the less the uh, rebels can catch up to us, and we can hit every single one of these points without them gaining hardly anything. By the time we come out of this nebula, they'll have no clue we were even here. This might be the run we've been looking for. But we'll see how this goes next time when we come back to FTL. Take care.